I want to tell you something about yourself. Because I know something about you that you may not know yourself. Or knowing it, you don't believe it. Or you won't admit it. But it is a fact, and a fact that we should all remember. And that is that you are equal to whatever. It makes no difference what may happen to you in this life. As a human being, as a child of God, as a Christian, you are equal to it. You can handle it. You are greater than anything that can ever happen to you. Wouldn't be a bad idea to go and look in the mirror once in a while and talk to yourself just like that. Whatever, however, whenever, in your pilgrimage from the cradle to eternity, you've got what it takes to handle anything you'll ever have to face up to in this life. So it follows. Don't make the mistake of playing yourself down and of minimizing your stature as a God's creation. Don't go whimpering and whining and crawling through life on your hands and knees piteously asking for sympathy because life's too much for you. You are equal to anything. Well, you may say this sounds preposterous, presumptuous, that this is an over-description. <laughs> well, there's nothing that I can say that would go beyond what the Bible says. And the Bible is a trustworthy book. I've been reading it all my life, and I have never yet been let down by it. Now, here is what it says. Behold! I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and uh, over all the power of the enemy. And nothing of any kind shall hurt you. Now, I assure you, I didn't make that up. I don't know exactly what a scorpion is. I don't think I ever saw a scorpion, except in a zoo, slithering and sliding around. I've seen serpents, big boken strickers. I don't know whether that's what Jesus meant, actual snakes. But there are a lot of snakes in this life that aren't under the category of serpents. That is a description of every evil thing. That's a description of things that can destroy you. And they're all lumped with the enemy. What is the enemy? It's, it's the thing that's against me and you. But it says, you are given authority to tread. How do you like that, eh? <laughs> you know, it sometimes wearies me, the 
pusillanimous. <laughs> There's a word for you, you know. <laughs> I haven't used that word in a long time. It, it come up out of the subconscious. The pusillanimous idea that people have about Christianity as some nice, perfumed, soft little thing that you visit on Christmas and Easter and the rest of the time you forget it. Mm. There are a lot of people in this town like that. Why, this is the most man-sized singer is around. The most woman-sized singer is around. Years ago, you didn't have to bring the woman-sized thing in, but now you do. <laughs> because in the old days, when you said man-sized, that included women. But they don't want to be included anymore. Then. <laughs> in other words, this thing is something big and great. And it helps you to have power and authority over everything. Sickness, opposition, weakness, frustration, disappointment, you name it. You are bigger than any of it. And you are equal to whatever. And the reason is, you've got faith capacity built into you. Faith. You never could see faith, no more than you can see electricity. But you couldn't have lights without being able to turn a button. And it's places flooded with light. That's the way faith operates. You turn a button of belief, and then wondrous power comes into your life. And you can handle whatever. Now, you know, I get letters all the time from people everywhere. Sometime I think I'll write a book on letters I've received. Because they say it, what I'm trying to say, better than I can say it, by far. Here's a man who never saw me in his life before. I never saw him. And he's a very young fella. He says, Dear Norman. <laughs> well, that's okay. His name is Gary, so thank you, Gary. I'm glad to get you there. <laughs> Five years ago, he says, at age 27, my wife and I were completely broke. I was a sweeper in a factory, and my wife... 22 was working. But we were concerned with improving our lives. So I started taking evening courses and finally became a real estate salesman. But we were afraid to have me quit my job as a sweeper, so I worked on the night shift and swept out and sold real estate during the day. As an American, I didn't want anybody to help me. <laughs> He's an old-fashioned American. <laughs> I wanted to make my own way on my own. Thank God we've still got people like that. So we scraped up enough money to purchase our first home, which needed lots of renovation which my wife and I did ourselves in our spare time. We started listening to your Sunday night radio broadcasts. I even started taping them. One Sunday night, I was so moved by your positive insistence that you can if you think you can that when you said, trust the Lord and go ahead, I immediately called up the plant and resigned my job as sweeper and never went back. And I'm still listening to those tapes. Now, five years later, 
I own one half of a real estate corporation in our area and have 10 people working for me. My wife and I work together every day. We also own a portion of another real estate organization. We own our own small office building and are now teaching real estate courses. This is a feat in itself since I couldn't speak very well, always nervous, so nervous that I felt that I was choking while I talked. But I always remembered what you said on one of those tapes. Never, 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 never give up. Hang in there with the Lord, and he will see you through. But now the quotation was from Winston Churchill. Never, 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 never give up when you're with the Lord. I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I like that story. I like Gary. He wants to do something with his life, and everything was seemingly against him, but two elements were for him. God, United States economic system, and he had faith in them both. And he found that he was equal to whatever. And so are you. So is anybody. If a person will let him or herself go and experience the power of faith. Now, I know this is a fact. I'm sure of it because I've had experience with it over more years than I care to tell you. If there's anybody in this congregation this morning defeated, you don't need to be. Because if you have faith in Jesus, he has given you power to tread upon all serpents and all scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And the enemy is yourself if you think that you are defeated. Now, I was speaking not long ago in a big hall to a big crowd at what was called a positive thinking rally. And I made my little speech, and I talked about like I'm talking here, and I told everybody in that audience, that if they had any faith at all to get it going and put their faith in God, in the country, and in themselves, and experience the resurgence of power that would come when this faith became operative. And I talked for 45 minutes along that line. Then I went backstage in this big auditorium, and all of a sudden, there came running a young lady who was laughing and crying at the same time, and she rushed up to me, and she threw her arms around me, and she said, oh, Dr. Peel, I love you. And I took a look at her beautiful face, and I said, you know something? I love you, too. But I said, to what shall we ascribe the deep affection that exists between us? <laughs> well, she said, I want to tell you, I've been a worm all my life, afraid of everything, afraid of people, afraid to do a job, afraid of boys, afraid of myself. I'm just a plain old worm. I said, you're a mighty pretty worm. <laughs> she said, you know, while you were talking out there, and all the other people on the program, she said, are professional speakers, but I knew you were just a plain preacher. <laughs> and every 
once in a while you'd weave God and Jesus into it. And I knew you and I were on the same wavelength because I loved Jesus. And then you, you said, if you've got any faith in the Lord, let it get going. And all of a sudden, she said, it was like something hit me in the head. Like somebody struck me hard in my head. And I felt so different that the minute you stopped talking, I couldn't help but run back here and tell you that from this minute on, I am no longer a worm. <laughs> well, it was very delightful experience, sweet little thing, 21 or 22, something like that. I did love her. God loved her because she was wonderful. She had found it by going to a hall where there was a meeting advertised as a positive thinking rally where you could become a greater person. But every Sunday of the world, in this church and in thousands of churches across the country, the promise is you come here, you take it, and you will become equal to whatever. Now, this is, this is the greatest romance in the world. What a person can become. What you can become. You ever stop to think what you actually could become? Did I ever stop to think? I better get at it quick. <laughs> so had you. Don't be content with being just ordinary. Don't settle for defeats. Don't embrace weakness. Don't think that because circumstances are difficult that you haven't got a glorious opportunity. So you, are, you, you, got to, you got to know that there's another thing built into you, and that is the victory principle, the win principle. I read where Mr. Steinbrenner the other day said there's only one thing that amounts to anything, and that's to win. Well, I'll buy that. To win over what? Your weaknesses, your defeats, yourself. Now, our Foundation for Christian Living has just had a reunion in Madrid, Spain. And we had 700 Americans there. Uh, Dr. Caliandro, Ms. Caliandro were there, and Mr. and Ms. Garagus, and Ms. Palmer, and others in the congregation here. And uh, we were there for a week. And we had on the program a singer by the name of Donna Hightower. By all odds, one of the greatest gospel expert singers I've ever listened to in all my life. And I've heard the greatest, as have you. Uh, Donna lives in Madrid. She's a great favorite in Europe, so I'm told. She was born down south somewhere. She came up to Chicago to seek her fortune. She went into a restaurant. They had a sign on the door, wanted a cook. And uh, she went in. She said, I'm the best cook in Mississippi. And uh, the man said, well, that's too bad. We just hired the best cook in North Carolina. <laughs> but he said, we've got a job as a dishwasher. She says, how much? He said, $18. She said, what's the cook get, by the way? He said, $35. Well, she said, I'll take your dishwashing job. And she was the best dishwasher they'd ever had in that restaurant. 
That's the way to get anywhere. Be the best dishwasher, the best sweeper out, or whatever that you can be. So one day, the cook failed to show. They waited until 10.30 in the morning for the cook, but she didn't show. So the manager said, there's somebody around here that applied for a job as cook. Oh, yes, he says, that's that diner over there. So he went to Dinah and he said, uh, you can cook? She said, yes, sir. He said, well, the cook hasn't shown and lunch is coming up and we've got to have lunch prepared. <coughs> go in there and cook. She said, now, sir, before I go in there to cook, you and I got to do a little negotiating. <laughs> she said, how much are you paying me? And he said, $18. And how much do you pay a cook? $35. Well, if I'm going to be the cook, then I got to get $35, eh? You see, she was a sagacious American Yankee, although she came from down south. <laughs> so she went out to cook. And she said she never can cook unless she can sing because she mixes love and harmony with the composition of the food. So she was in the kitchen singing at the top of her voice gospel hymns. And there came a, an agent in there for lunch one day. And he said, turn the radio up a little higher. I want to hear that exquisite voice. They said, that's not the radio. That is our cook who always sings while she cooks. He said, open the door so I can hear her. And then he said afterwards, I'd like to meet her. And he said to her, ma'am, you've got a marvelous voice. Where'd you get it? She said, from Jesus. Oh, he said. Then he said, well, have you an agent? She said, what's an agent? <laughs> he said, haven't you a contract? She said, what kind of a contract? He took her, he signed her to a contract. She'd gone all over the world. And if you ask her to explain it, she says, I gave my life to Jesus. And Jesus gave me life. Now who could take an uneducated girl out of a kitchen and make her an international celebrity as a singer of gospel songs and other classical music. It's Jesus. All my life long, I've been seeing these miracles that happen to people. I look out on this congregation, I can see many miracles in the form of people whose lives have been changed by the wondrous, incredible, amazing, exciting gospel of Jesus. So, remember those scorpions and serpents and those enemies you are created to have dominion. So take it and put your foot down on them all and stand there in the name of the Lord, equal to whatever greater than anything that can ever happen to you. And this is not a speech of bravado. This is a talk based solidly on the truth that you can be anything you want to be in the name of and by the grace of the greatest expert in human nature who ever lived, Jesus Christ 
our Lord and our Savior. That's a fact. Thank you, dear Lord, for the truth expressed. Not expressed very well, we grant you that. Because this thing is so big that for a human being to try to find words to express it is, is so difficult. But let your far greater, more persuasive words sing through these poor words into all the human arts here. And let us go out of here knowing that we're greater than anything. <laughs>